Let's take this flat image and give it more punch using Lightroom's masking tools. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. As always, we are starting with the basic adjustments, setting up the shot for the masking adjustments later on. So let's expand the basic panel. I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will lessen the overall contrast, but this gives me more control over it. So that's exactly what I want. Then right away, I'm going to bring down the exposure, making this whole scene a little bit darker, but this will also reveal some more of these nice long exposure cloud structures in the sky. I think right around here is a good spot. Also looking at this gram, you can see it's kind of well balanced between the darks and the highlights. Uh, I want to continue working on the highlights. I want to bring them down all the way just to have some more details in the sky. But for the next step, I'm going to start to bring back contrast to this image. So we brought down the highlights. To bring back contrast, I'm going to bring up the whites just a little bit. We're going to do a lot more of that later on with masking. But for the base image, I don't want to overdo it. So raising the whites a little bit should be enough already. I'm also going to bring down the shadows, just giving the dark areas some more punch. And I think I'm also going to bring down the blacks as well. Okay, that's looking good. Now that I have adjusted the exposure, the next step is to adjust the white balance. You can see this image has a very clear blue color cast. You might want to keep it. However, I think it doesn't look so good. So what I'm going to do is to increase the temperature and I kind of want to aim for a more neutral white balance, but still I'm eyeballing it. So I think right around here looks good. We could also adjust the tint. I do think there's a little bit of a purple color cast. So I'm going to bring down the tint just to eliminate that right around here looks fine. Okay, then I want the details of the image to have some more sharpness. So I'm going to bring up the texture at the same time. I want to have a very subtle glow effect overall. So I'm going to very carefully bring down the clarity just like this. Okay, I think that's looking good. Let's bring up the vibrance. And I also want to bring up the saturation to restore some of these nice fresh spring colors. So that is the image after the basic adjustments. Let's take a look at before. You can see it's a whole lot darker. That's intended. It's still looking flat, but again, we are just done with the basic adjustments. Now we're going to target a few areas with masks and bring in some more depth to the image. So let's open up the masking panel. Right away, let's start with something really, really simple with the sky. We can make it a lot cooler by introducing more shadows and more lights to specific areas of the sky. So let me start with a linear gradient and I'm going to cover pretty much most of the sky like this. Notice how we're overlapping those trees in the center. If you would adjust this mask now, the trees would change as well, but that's of course not what we want. We can try to get rid of them by subtracting and choose select a subject. Lightroom should detect those trees as the subject of the image. As you can see, this mask is not perfect, but it should do its job. Now, what I'm going to do is to bring down the exposure quite a bit, and this will make the top part of the sky darker. I'm also going to increase the contrast. Increasing the contrast will help revealing more of those cloud structures. And for the same effect, I'm going to bring up the clarity. Let's raise the clarity a lot right around here. All right, you can see how just one mask like this has a huge impact on the image already and we can further build up on this one mask. I'm going to use another linear gradient and I'm again using it for the top part of the sky and this time I'm targeting a smaller area. Also, I'm kind of following the shape of these clouds here. That's why it's tilted a little bit. And I'm making it smaller to get a more natural effect with the very top part of the sky being the darkest. So once the mask is set up, again, I'm going to bring down the exposure very gently. And again, I'm going to increase the contrast. Wonderful. Let's repeat this. I'm going to create one more linear gradient for the very, very top. And again, I want to bring down the exposure, making this area even darker. All right, that's looking wonderful. Again, let me deactivate all those masks to see the difference from before to after. 
As you can see, this changes a lot since we are creating shadows for the image and shadows help to perceive depth. Now that we made the top part of the sky darker, let's make the bottom part of the sky brighter. Therefore, I'm starting with a select sky mask. Of course, we don't want to select all of the sky, so I'm going to subtract and let's choose a linear gradient. I'm taking out the upper part of the sky. I think like this should be fine. And then all I need to do is to bring up the exposure. As I do this, I'm always paying close attention to the histogram because we don't want to introduce any clipping in the highlights. That's very important. But you can see we still have a lot of room to play around with. So that means I can bring up the whites and you will see how this will add some really nice looking contrast, creating this really cool light effect behind the hill. I do think I wanna make this linear gradient a little bit smaller, so I drag it down a bit, but that's looking great. Again, I wanna turn off all the masks because now there is really a huge, huge difference to before. So that's our base image. And there is the edited version with masks applied. Now the sky is looking good, Let's also work on the landscape in the foreground because as you can see, it is still super flat and boring. Again, we want to introduce lights and shadows to it to make it more interesting. So since there's not much going on, we can use simple linear gradients again. Let me create one and I'm going to create shadow in the very near foreground. Again, I'm tilting this linear gradient a little bit just to have a more natural looking shadow effect. And what I'm going to do in here is to pull down the exposure. We could also bring up the contrast a little bit, giving this area some more punch. Now I think this shadow area is a little bit too small, so I'm going to bring up the, ra the linear gradient a bit like this. Okay, we can not only introduce shadows, we can also introduce light to the landscape. So let me use another linear gradient. I wanna kind of target the back of the field right here. Again, I want to rotate this linear gradient slightly. Of course, now we are overlapping the shadows we previously have introduced in the foreground. So we need to get rid of that part of the mask. For that, simply go to subtract and choose a linear gradient, subtracting the shadows we have created before. So this is looking pretty good here to create light. I'm going to bring up the exposure. This might look a bit weird, so I'm also going to bring up the whites, which will target the brighter areas a little more specifically. So something like this is fine. I do also want to alter the hill in the distance. So let me create a linear gradient coming down from the top, targeting just that hill. And I want to subtract the sky. also want to subtract a radial gradient. Kind of want to make the top part of the hill brighter than the rest. Let's maybe subtract a linear gradient just to be safe. Okay, and to make it darker, all we need to do is to bring down the exposure. Nice. Let me see, what else can we do? I think I'm going to use a linear gradient for that field in the foreground, covering the whole field like this. And I wanna introduce some more texture and some clarity, just to make all these grass blades a little more visible this way. And I want to target the subject, so let's create a subject mask. Let's see, this is selecting way more than needed. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient, taking out the bottom part like this. And I'm also going to subtract a color range mask since there are parts of the sky selected. I'm just clicking right in here. And there we have a pretty nice selection for the subject. What I want to do for that is to make it pop a little more. I'm going to start with a bit of clarity. I also want to bring up the exposure, making the subject just a little brighter. Let's bring up the contrast for more punch. And let's increase the whites and the shadows, just to make it a little brighter. Okay, that's looking much better. Now there's one more thing I want to do, and that is to add some very, very subtle glow coming over the hill. So I'm going to create a radial gradient. Let's make it very thin and very long like this. I'm making sure it's overlapping the hill so the light effect will become visible. And I'm going to increase the blacks just a little bit. I really don't want to overdo it. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. Okay, that should be enough. 
This creates a very nice looking subtle glow effect. I'm going to repeat this on the other side. So I'm going to add another radial gradient to it like this. Let's rotate it and place it on in the edge. Okay, that's looking great. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. Now let me turn off all the masks so we can see the difference from before to after. Much better, much more 3D looking. So masking really helps bringing images to life. Now let's do a little bit of color grading, but there's really not much going on. I'm going to start in the color mixer. I want to go into the hue tab first and I want to make these green tones look a little warmer. Therefore, let me very carefully bring down the green hue. This will give them a more yellowish hue. I'm also going to head into the saturation tab. I'm going to bring up the green saturation quite a bit to have this nice fresh looking green. And I'm also going to bring up the blue tones a bit for the sky. All right, we could also check out the luminance tab playing around with the green luminance, making all the green tones a little brighter this way. This will further help with the contrast. I think this is looking pretty nice. So that's it for the color mixer. I'm not going to touch the split toning. I don't think it's needed for this shot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head on into the calibration tab and I want to bring down the blue primary hue very gently. And of course, I also want to raise the saturation here. All right, that's looking lovely. Then, of course, you want to sharpen this image in the details tab. Let's do this. Bring down the radius, increase the details all the way up. Then we want to add some masking while holding down all key. This way we can nicely target the important parts of the image and then let's sharpen them. Okay, and there we have the edited raw image. Now you can still see some distracting trees on both sides. I'm going to get rid of them in Photoshop because doing that in Lightroom would be a huge pain in the ass. So let me right click on the image, go to edit and, and choose open as smart object in Photoshop. And the first thing I'm doing is to duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J to have a backup. Then there are a few sensor spots. I promise I have cleaned my camera, but due to these heavy adjustments, these sensor spots just become more visible. So we want to clean them using the spot healing brush, just getting rid of all these little dots. All right, looking good so far. Then we want to get rid of these trees. I'm going to use the lesser tool to create a selection. This selection doesn't need to be very precise, just roughly outlining those trees. Maybe even that road a little bit. And once we have our selection, what I'm going to do is to use the generator fill. So I'm clicking on this little button right here and choose generate. All right, that's looking good. So we have cleaned up the left side. And there's also a bit on the right side, which we need to fix. I'm using the clone stamp tool for that. I'm going to copy an area from the cell right here and just brush over the rest. All right, and there we have the finished image. I hope this little masking tutorial was interesting. Of course, if you have questions left or if you want to add anything, let me know in the comments as always. And thank you so much for watching this video.